from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The Department of Environmental Affairs has launched an electric vehicle pilot program which will see it trial a fleet of electric vehicles in the capital. Natalie Grieve attended the launch of the initiative to find out more. This pilot program will see local vehicle manufacturer Nissan, the primary private sector partner, providing the DEA with four Nissan LEAF electric vehicles for the initial phase of the project, which would run for three years. Speaking at the launch, Water and Environmental Affairs Minister Edmund Molewa said that while the program was the first of its kind in the country, it would not be the last. Today, we are very proud as we are launching this groundbreaking multi-stakeholder partnership project uh, to pilot, to test and to demonstrate the feasibility and viability of electric vehicles under South African conditions. Malewa added that the project does not exclusively centre on the electric cars themselves, but also focuses on the supporting infrastructure, such as battery charge stations, that will need to be in place to enable the significant uptake and use of electric cars in the country. The fundamental motivation for embarking on this project is for us indeed driven by the urgent need for South Africa to transition to a job creating, and I emphasize, job creating, sustainable, low carbon and green economy, as clearly outlined in our national development plan. Energy Minister Dupua Peters added that the pilot program will also serve to determine the end user infrastructure and running costs associated with local electric vehicle use. Ladies and gentlemen, electric vehicles offer our country a great opportunity over time to significantly reduce the dependence of conventional fuels in the transport sector. This is in line with our integrated resource plan, which sees us diversifying our energy carriers for transportation purposes more and more away from fossil fuels. The South African launch of the Nissan LEAF would follow similar pilot programs implemented in the US, Europe and Japan in 2010. The vehicle featured an 80 kilowatt motor powered by a 24 kilowatt an hour lithium ion battery that could be charged at residential buildings. A seven hour charge would power the vehicle for some 160 kilometers in city mode, while a 30 minute charge at a public station would enable a 50 kilometer travel distance. Nissan South Africa CEO Mike Woodfield emphasized that while the LEAF was an electric vehicle, it was more responsive than a conventional compact family car and could reach speeds in excess of 140 kilometers an hour. The intention of this initiative is to begin in a very small step the process of creating an environment in which environmentally friendly electrical vehicles or EVs as we know them can be operating on the South African roads in the not too distant future. Other news making headlines this week, the state's bailout of SAA is illegal, Africa needs $40 billion a year to meet its future power demand and AFROX moves ahead with its 300 million rand Kucha air separation unit. In a scathing criticism of management practices employed by the state in the running of national air carrier South African Airways, Free Market Foundation Executive Director Leon Lowe has accused it of acting illegally through the provision of regular bailouts in an effort to keep the beleaguered national airline afloat. SA Airways must operate autonomously and on a commercial basis. Quote. So these are quotes. These are not uh, adaptations. It will not enjoy any privileges as a result of being a government enterprise. Um, government will in future not guarantee, we've just had a five billion guarantee. Now my view is that guarantee is unconstitutional because it's in breach of a founding government policy. Not guarantee new loans to SA Airways or any other airline with government interests while private airlines have to borrow at their own risk. That's unambiguous. You can't get more blunt than that. And I don't know how anybody could say that the bailouts and the backing, implicit and explicit, are lawful. It seems to me that they're clearly unlawful. It is estimated that at least $40 billion a year is required to meet future demand in the African power sector, compared with current yearly investment of less than one quarter this amount. The other lesson that was very clear is that a refit policy is not um, a standalone policy. It requires an enabling environment. If you define a very nice refit policy, but the env investment environment is not conducive to international investors for those targeting international investors, 
or is does not lend itself to the work of community groups owning power plants, then you've simply not um, provided the right environment for implementation. Welding, cutting and gas services company Afrox, a member of the Linda Group, is planning to install a 150 tonne a day air separation unit valued at 300 million rand in the Kucha Industrial Development Zone near Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape. The ASU will produce liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen and liquid argon. The customer base in Port Elizabeth growing and to have a production unit close to the users means we don't have the risks of transporting a long distance and we don't have the risk of a third party producing. So having a production close to the customers is going to give them security supply. We've got a geographic footprint throughout Africa, but specifically South Africa and PE. We had a weakness as far as actually having production close to the customer base. So when we looked at the stra strategy, we saw a gap. It's the modern technology from uh, the Linda, Linda world, so it is a standalone merchant plant, 150 ton a day, producing oxygen, nitrogen, argon, high purity, and we'll have 10 days of backup storage as well. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.